you just never know when a 200 is going to show up in the Hunter Classic, and quite honestly, you never know if you've gotten close. I often wonder just how many times I've been maybe a change of direction away from encountering one, and I think that's what makes it so intriguing and so interesting to come back time after time looking for the same result. And I do think switching up is good, so we're going to kind of go in reverse of what we would normally do. So we've spawned over in this area, and the plan is going to be, I think, to walk at least as far as this tripod. If we don't see anything, then we'll likely fast travel to here and kind of keep going. But normally we'd spawn at the lodge and kind of go up around to the north. This time we'll try it in reverse and see if it does anything different. No way. 135 to 160 albino buck coming in as our first. I've been tracking this guy. 80 to 100 kg, a different buck just called. So I stopped and started hitting the grunt collar. I don't know, he looked like he should be in that area of 160. Our biggest albino whitetail ever is a 155. I can't believe that that's walking in. And, you know, as I said, I think changing up is good. I decided to go with the 10 year anniversary jacket, like the blue jeans, we're not wearing any camo. And that's kind of because of the recurve. We've got a bit more range at least than what I would have with the longbow. Let's confirm that's the buck that I was tracking. It is. That's unreal. I mean, the first track we hit in a hunt where we're likely to be here for two hours is one of an albino. And how many times have I said this? In Classic, when a rare shows up, so often there's another one somewhere on the map. And to encounter this one so early on, I think our odds of maybe stumbling into another one are pretty decent, but... Man, is that cool. That's a nice buck. I wish the estimate was better just to add like a little bit of maybe that's a super rare kind of idea to it because for a super rare white I think you need 175. What a cool buck. And like I said, there's another one coming in. So, man, do we, do we let it lay? If we can drop him just in case there's a potential for a super rare in that way, he's well in range. Actually, that would be a good spot. If we can drop him for a trophy shot, let's see. Haven't fired the recurve today. Nice. I cannot believe that just happened. Let's, man, it's a risk, you know, if like the internet dies or if the game crashes. It's, uh, it's a risk to not pick him up, but because there should be another buck coming in, let's just kind of see. As a bear's been walking around us this entire time as well. Let's make sure that's not anything all that special. I, I guess we'll wait it out, actually. There's a doe there. Maybe the buck's not far off. There's been no sign of that other buck, and it just kind of makes me question whether or not he's coming in, and obviously, uh, well, that might be him. I'm rather excited to pick this up, but not only does it potentially lend itself to being a super rare, and I rarely, actually, I don't know if I've ever had a rare down and just waited like this, but just because there's another buck coming in, it could be a non-typical, it could be like another rare, you never know. And because I knew about it, and also because like that was our first buck of the hunt, you can see that tripod that I talked about going towards just south of us. It's still early and we'll end up with a much nicer looking trophy shot if we can, you know, kill five or 10 minutes and let it get a little lighter out. So. I think even for that reason, it's worth the wait. Well, no super rare today, just a 110 to 135 buck coming in, but I actually don't mind that that much, and actually we're going to make an effort to shoot him far enough away from the albino that it's not going to be in the trophy shot, just for the sake of really highlighting the rare. So, just gonna, well, I thought maybe make a, like, spine one shot? Hopefully that's into the lungs or intestines. At this rate, with the amount of time that we have to take the trophy shot, get it all lined up, and of course wait out this rain, however long that's going to take, I imagine he'll go and expire. Get the dough out of the way, we're not going to be able to check the blood. He's actually coming kind of back through here. Kind of got to get better at keeping those shots low again using the carbon recurve, but anyway. Enough wait, let's go and see what this guy is. And man, he's got a nice frame, like... If he had another tide or two, he could be in that super rare area. 
Albino, 85 kg, 153.5, and we double lunged him at 13 meters. So our biggest albino ever is actually 155, but that would have been, I think, before trophy lodges. So this will easily be our best rare since lodges. And we have a pretty interesting uh, outfit going on for this one. I do really think waiting, though, made a big difference. Like, the light hitting the albino here versus what it was when we shot him is so much better. So we'll take that as our trophy shot. We have a buck to go and track, but what a start. I'm glad we got that break in the rain to take the trophy shot, because it is absolutely pouring again. But actually, our buck didn't make it far. I, I guess he started coming back during the process of that trophy shot, and the liver intestine would have helped him go down a lot more quickly, but it just hit me because I was going to maybe fast travel here. We talked about at the beginning doing this kind of route in reverse. What are the odds if we started down here and walked all the way up around that the albino would have crossed paths with us? It could have happened, but there's a very real chance that it just wouldn't have occurred, and that is the whole thing that I was getting at. How many times do we just t go the wrong way, you spawn at the wrong tent when a 200 may be around? It just comes down to that luck, and again, that's what makes this grind so fascinating. And we've got another nice buck coming in after the fast travel, 125 to 145. I like that our albino was bigger than this one, but I really like that frame. And again, if he had a couple more tines like the albino, he'd be a good bit bigger. I guess that's kind of obvious, but with that particular frame, there is room for more tines to be on there. We had a bull moose call out as well. There's the cow there. Let's not call just yet. If we can maybe get up in that tower and kind of confirm if the moose is worth going after, it might save us either getting charged by the cow or just the time spent to potentially get around it. Neck bone and right lung, 139 for that guy. You don't get a ton of 130s white till a lot of times you get between like 120 and then you just kind of jump up to 140. So that's kind of cool to see a, a different number pop up. Unfortunately, not all max weight tracks are created equal. This was yet another instance of picking up a max weight track, this time 85 to 100. Actually, our albino was 80 to 100. This guy definitely has the weight advantage, but oh boy. That step forward is going to cost us a little bit of tracking. And uh, what I was going to say was the albino, of course, had not only the antler advantage, but also the kind of cool factor advantage of being a rare. So. Ironically enough, like with the albino, another buck had called over on this side, and it once again gives us time to maybe go and let that buck expire, so hopefully he'll still come in. And much like with the albino, it's not a special buck by any means, 45 to 70, but it does give a little more time for our other buck to expire, and I think it should have been intestines. It was close to being too far back to be like hip bone. Man. Maybe I should just start shooting like I did with the longbow and go for those neck shots. Our front on angles have not treated us well today, but it will be another recurve harvest by the time we track him down. Lung shot again, so it won't be too bad. And no doubt now by the time we go and get to track the first bug, he'll be down. So one down, that shot is right in there in the neck and man, lung intestine, like how? I just wonder how we end up not getting the liver on that. Maybe it was straight through and it was too far to the side. But like lung liver is usually enough for an instrop, so we're close to getting him down. And like I said, it does buy us a little time for the other buck to go and expire. And that worked out really well. I hadn't even made it back to the track and just saw this guy laying down over here. Really, I think save us time in that aspect. It was hip bone too, so we needed all of it. But I think actually, I mentioned right at the beginning there with the albino so often in classic when one rare is on the map, it just seems like there is another, and that doesn't mean there is necessarily another one out here, but I do at least want to give it a shot. So we're going to head over here to the east side of the map a bit. We'll still kind of stay in whitetail territory, but I'm hoping to maybe get to encounter some elk, some maybe blacktail, just kind of see if there's anything else around. Whitetail though is not exactly the targeted uh, animal, but we'll call that and see if any bugs come with it. At least at first glance, all I'm seeing is another doe coming in and a black bear hanging out right over in that area. So I think, especially because there is another doe, let's go ahead and try to get this one. It might be a bit of an awkward angle, 
depends kind of where it wants to stop at. That shouldn't be too bad. And if we can, I just want to get out of here before the other doe comes in. I prefer to just not even have to worry about it. So we're going to essentially go down towards this tower and then maybe up around. So I think we can kind of just get out of here without disturbing it. I wouldn't call it huge necessarily. 165 to 190 is a nice bug, but it only took a little bit of getting away from that tree stand and he called and he was out of render from the stand. Now maybe he would have walked into render, maybe we would have gotten him from there, but I think it was that movement that got him coming in and considering our albino was 153 and our biggest buck to this point, and this guy had a minimum estimate of 12 inches bigger, we know he is going to be our best buck. And by the way, unfortunately, I do know that that buck grunting over there is not that special. I actually saw him on my way over to get this guy. So let's see. Lung and liver 169.9999. I've had one other buck like that in the past that I thought was going to be a little bit better and was just shy of 170. Five nines at the end of that score. Definitely still our best buck. Kind of disappointing that he didn't crack 170. I could not wait any longer. I went ahead and made a single player game. I wanted to come in here and take a look at our albino. And of course, in multiplayer, you can't adjust the poses. So maybe we'll do that. He's kind of uneven. And I like that in a way it gives him some character. Definitely costs him a little bit on the score. But this is kind of like what our rare white toe would look like in the past. If I can get that to highlight ahead of for a second, a 120 melanistic, we've had a piebald in that area uh, in the trophy lodge, but like I mentioned, we had that 155 albino years ago. It just was long before lodges, so to finally get one in that area in the lodge, I just think that's so cool, and no 200, but getting to add to this rares lodge once again, I mean, it just looks so cool, all the antler in here, and who knows, that may not be the best rare we get on this 200 grind, but anyway, that officially is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.